Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Kevin. It is good to be back with you. I just want to say, first of all, thank you to all of the new subscribers I've had in 2019. It's been a while since I posted a video, and uh, I'm really looking to get back into a weekly posting schedule going into 2020. But a big thanks to everybody who subscribed to all of your comments. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm always overwhelmed by the um, outpouring of good folks out there. So today what I want to talk with you about is, since this is my first video back, I thought why not talk about a tool that's helping me to stay organized to post on a regular basis going into 2020, and that is Airtable.com. You may have heard about it, you may not, but if you go to Airtable.com, it is completely free. There are upgrades where you can pay more for subscription uh, services, but I'm going to show you everything here that I do that's completely free. So when you come to Airtable.com, once you get signed in, you'll have all these templates that you can see here. Digital video production, event planning, project tracking. All of these are completely customizable. And think about Airtable, guys, as a, an Excel sheet on steroids. It's basically a cloud-based Excel sheet that you can do so much more with. What I use it for and what we're going to look at today is digital video production. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, my digital video production. And this is my Airtable for this. So here, guys, is my digital video production. And you can see uh, along the very top, you've got video tracker. You have locations, scenes, shots, equipment notes, props, and inventory. These are all the things that come generic with the digital video production uh, Airtable project. Uh, template, if you will. So you, you have a staff directory and agency. So if you are actually working with people, you can keep track of all the people that are working on your project right inside of here. But let's, for the sake of what we're doing, let's go back to the videos tracker. Now the video tracker allows me to um, really start to brainstorm what I'm going to do for videos. So this is the first place I come to guys when I have an idea for videos and I've got two channels. I have Design for Training YouTube, well actually three, Design for Training YouTube, my Design for Training website, and my brand new site that I hope you guys will check out in 2020, Kevin Cassidy on YouTube, which is going to be really all about hobbies, photo, video, and a little bit of cooking. So Design for Training is what I do for um, basically e-learning and training in media, and then Kevin Cassidy is going to be a little bit more about some hobbies and helping people get into videos and photos and things of that nature. So anyways, this is where I come to to start my brainstorming. You can see each one of these rows is a new project idea. So you would use it just like Excel. And if you go along the top here, you can see you have all of these customizable row, or excuse me, column headers. From platform to video type. Let's just go ahead and take a look across. Video type, you can have a description, you can have a project lead, a release date, which is very critical. So I come in here on the left and I put all of my videos that are going to be produced in the coming weeks on a weekly basis on the left-hand side, and I assign them a release date. Then I have a project lead, project status, which is great. You can look and see what the status of your project is. Um, as we come across, if you need a writer column, a script deadline for doing your scripting, this particular video I will <laughs> I will share with you. I'm not scripting it. This one's off the cuff. But for others, I do script them. Then you've got your script location storyboard, your shoot date, your scenes, your edit date. So you can see this is incredibly rich. And you can use as much of it or as little of it as makes sense to you. So what I do here, guys, is I keep the platform column. I have a video type. And let's take a look at this. I can actually go in there and rename this field. So I can add these different options right here to my dropdown. What I do is essentially, guys, is tutorial screencasts, explainer videos, documentary. I don't currently do any commercials, but I may do a vlog. So I've added all these options. Now you can actually click here and determine what kind of a field this is in your Airtable. It can be a single line of text. It can be a long text. So if you need to put a long description, like I'll show you later, you want a long text box. Then you've got attachments, check boxes, multiple select. It is completely customizable and so simple to use. So when you go over to the next one here, this is description. So this is where I actually have it as a long text box. Show how I use Airtable, Asana, and Google Calendar in Harmony. That's what I'm doing today. Um, you can come over to project lead, release, release date. It has a simple little calendar picker that you see here. 
which I love. That's really nice. All of this is so easy. Project status. So I can give each one of these projects a status. And again, I can customize the field type and add or delete any statuses that I need, which I think is fantastic. And uh, all of these things too, guys, I, I just want to show you quickly. You can move these around anywhere you like. So if you want your release date to be the first one, you can move your release date right over there. I like to keep it in this particular order because I have a release date, project status, project lead, and then as I move along, I have what would be kind of a sequential workflow. First a script deadline, then a shooting date, or a recording date in this case, and then an edits due date, um, and then actually today I am releasing this video. So you can see right here this Airtable video is released today. So just a, a great, great tool. So down here um, is my Kevin Cassidy YouTube. And it's the same type of thing. It just keeps everything um, nicely tucked away where it needs to be. So I have a description and project lead and all the same things. So I find this to be great. Now that's the video tracker. That's where I go to plan at a high level uh, what these videos will be. Now you can go into the, into the locations tab and you can actually put what location you'll be at for each one of these videos in each one of the scenes actually. So I won't go too deep into it, but really cool that you can actually have all these different areas here for your shoot location. Now for scenes. So this is where it gets really, really cool for scenes. You can come in and put in a new scene and number them sequentially for each and every part of your video. So I would have scene one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven here. So if I'm doing, let's, let's say, a Brooker Creek compilation, which is a local preserve nearby my home, then I will have one scene, arrival in the roadway, restoration area, the history of the creek. So I see my video well before it happens. And each scene, I can come over here and give it a description. And I can make notes. I can also put the location, the shoot date for it, so this here is where I can come in and add equipment. And this is really cool. So by clicking this plus sign, my entire inventory of equipment that I have loaded into the other tab is now available for me. So let's say I wanted a particular camera to shoot this scene, but and it'll be done on a particular day. I can add that camera. I can add, say, that microphone. I can add lights. I can add whatever it is that I need I can make it right here. So I've completely planned out my production before I even go to shoot it. There's also a, a spot here for total time, which is important. And then if you need authorization, there's a way to uh, keep track of who needs to authorize it. And you can actually link these things in Google Drive to your actual script. So you can have call lists for casts, you can have scripts. It is very, very rich in the way it lets you do things. So once you have all, all of your scenes, the next thing you would want to do is plan your shots. So let's go to the Shots tab. And for the Shots tab, I've actually got some sample shots that I've got here for an upcoming one in DaVinci, which is going to be on organizing media in DaVinci. Now, this one may not quite make as much sense as, say, a documentary. But again, I just want to show you for the sake of loading it in, you can actually have your shoot date, your shot number, your scene, and then you've got a description of your scene, and it also comes with the shot subject. So this could be an actor or an actress, whoever you, you have in your video. This is really cool. Shot size. So I've loaded in here close-ups, extreme close-ups, wide close-ups, long shot, medium shot, point of view, all of those things. Really cool. And then it even lets you put in your camera angle. So this is where I can actually tell it what camera angle my shot's going to have. Is it hip level, eye level, overhead, extremely high? Is it shallow focus, deep focus? I can tell it all those things. Movements. So this is my camera movement column. Static, zoom in, zoom out. And of course, down here is my equipment. So I can actually see what equipment is going to be used for that particular shot. I can actually go down to my lens. And I've put all my lenses in here. So I can predetermine, guys, what lenses I'm going to take for that shoot on that day for that scene, which really makes your life a whole lot easier if you're making videos externally. Now, if you're just doing what I'm doing here, which is a screencast, it's not so much. Um, 
I would say you'd get minimal use out of these, but it's still helpful if you just do screencasts. But if you're thinking about shooting any videos with equipment or external equipment, this guy's is a killer. This is fantastic. Um, so let's see, equipment notes, props and equipment inventory. We talked about that. This is where I just load in everything that I own, which is wonderful from cameras to lenses, to filters, to microphones. You load it all in here and it becomes available to you to use in your um, drop down. And then staff directory, I don't have any, you know, um, I don't do any subcontract work. Anything I do, I do myself. So staff directory agencies and all that, I don't particularly use that. But anyway, so that is essentially Guy's Airtable. You've got an incredibly robust tool that you can filter, sort, customize. You can also create new tabs up here. So if you wanted to do something completely different, you don't have to go by these tabs. You don't have to use these uh, row headers column headers rather you can simply come in here and make up your own so what i'll do is i'll probably do a deeper dive in 2020 into some more um, individual areas of Airtable to take a deeper look at but that's kind of a high level so the next thing i want to talk about is Airtable does a great job at all at what i've just showed you but it doesn't really track your video time spent so for me it's still important to have Google Calendar. So this is where I'll still use Google Calendar for how I spend my social media time. So just to give you an idea, what I do is each day of the week, I try to chunk one hour. So in total, guys, for both channels, I'm trying to do one video a week for each channel. But I'm trying not to spend any more than 10 hours a week on social media. So I do two on the weekend on a Sunday, two hours on Saturday, and then my other five days, Monday through Friday, I spend one hour. So it gives me roughly nine to ten total hours spent on social media. So that's my time to do my work. Normally, guys, the two hours that you see on Saturday and Sunday, those are going to be spent shooting. Um, my weekday stuff that's only an hour may be doing stuff exactly like this. Screencasting, doing a quick little tutorial video. But when it comes to actual editing work and shooting, normally the shoots are done Saturdays and Sundays because I have more time. I, social media is not the way I make my money, so I need to keep things to the weekend. So I spend about half of my time on the weekend, and the other half of my time, one hour per night, and that's it. So that's how I use Google Calendar to help me understand how I'm going to manage my time. But Google Calendar doesn't give me all of the details I need for checking off tasks. Yes, they do have Google Tasks, but I'll be honest, I really don't like it. I've tried to do Google Tasks. It just isn't all that rich. For me, guys, if you know me, you know that I use Asana. And I also use Asana for all of my social media. So this is where I track, guys, everything I do. So these are the details. So let me give you an example. You're looking at Monday through Sunday. And every Thursday, I put up a Design for Training YouTube video. This one that you're seeing here, 12.5. That gets published each Thursday morning. Um, on a Sunday... I will actually publish my new Kevin Cassidy YouTube channel on Sunday. So I publish on Thursday, I publish on Sunday. Now, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you'll notice here that I keep everything color-coded in Asana in purple. So all of my social media is purple. You will see that on a Monday, I edit my Design for Training video that's uh, due today that you're seeing. And then I'll also spend some more time on a Tuesday doing editing. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I'm editing this video for design for training. And then on uh, Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, guys, I'm actually doing editing for my Sunday video on Kevin Cassidy's YouTube channel. So I'm really trying to split everything up, guys, to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, published Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday for my second channel, publish Sunday. I would say, guys, whatever you want to do is, is fine. M create something that works with your schedule, but make sure it's something you can stick with. This, to me, is something that I can really begin to stick with. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is inside of here, I've actually got some Asana things for promoting. So, for example, Thursday, today, I'm releasing this video. But I've also got here a to-do item that for my Twitter channel for Design for Training and my LinkedIn, I'm going to put a teaser up or an announcement that today's video is coming. 
So I would tease that before. And let's say Saturday, I would actually go to my Twitter account for Kevin Cassidy, which goes, it's going to be my companion for Kevin Cassidy YouTube, and I will tease my Sunday video. So as you can see, guys, it's just a recurring thing of editing, shooting, editing, promoting, publishing. Shooting, editing, promoting, and publishing. And Asana keeps track of that in a way that no way Google Calendar ever could. And so that's why I use Asana for it, because it's just so much more detailed. I can check things off as I do it. With Asana, I can simply click and drag these tasks around. So if something didn't get done on a particular day, I can drag it to the next one. And that makes it super easy. If you want to check out uh, my videos, I do have other videos on Asana a little more fully and robustly. But I just wanted to show you how I use it in my video production tracking. So that, guys, is about it. I want to keep this as short as possible, but that's Airtable. Um, I hope you give it a shot. It is fabulous to help keep you on track. Um, that's how I use Airtable, Google Calendar, and Asana to keep me in line for 2020. So I certainly hope to have a successful publishing season through December and into next year. You'll be seeing a whole lot more from me. And um, as always, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye.